Well, since I've got the uh, grass drag mod sled back together and running, I kind of got to come up with a cooldown cart for it. Now, in the past, we've made cooldown carts out of bigger coolers and, you know, automotive batteries and wagons and big, uh, you know, sump pumps or uh, bilge pumps out of boats. And, yeah, they work well, but, man, they're a, they're a pain to put in the back of the truck, the haul, take up so much space. So, for this one, I'm trying to go, like, the bare minimum cooling capacity, uh, keep it lightweight, something you can carry in one hand. And still get the job done of cooling the motor down. So for that, I've got this old uh, Rubbermaid cooler. I uh, already had it a little bit chopped up at one point, but we're going to revamp it and come up with something better. Now the heart of this system is going to be this RV pump. At least I think it's out of an RV. It was, looks like it's made from pumping water. Um, probably not super high pressure or high volume, but runs off at 12 volts and it ought to be fairly efficient some of the bilge pumps that we've ran I mean they're they're really aggressive they throw a lot of water almost more than you know more flow than you really need to cool something down so I think having something a little bit slower isn't a bad thing and plus I got it for like five bucks either at a swap meet or a yard sale so that's what we're gonna soldier on with yeah it says 2.8 gallons per minute not a whole lot but it should be enough 6.2 amp max draw and that isn't very bad you can see it spins it's got a diaphragm there probably a couple of one-way valves inside and that's about it so we got the old power pack here Let's see if this thing see if it chooches oh yeah Perfect. Now this right here, these hurt in the wallet. These are those quick disconnects. And in the past I've tried garden hose things, um, other cheap disconnects. You know, unfortunately nothing works as well as these uh, CPC holder products. These are kind of the standard in the uh, quick disconnect world. You need to have the ones that have the uh, the stopper, the shut off, automatic shut off when you disconnect them, so all the antifreeze or water doesn't drain out. And that's one of the problems with the cheap ones; they just don't work very well or last very long, especially when you're uh, maybe running some hot coolant through it. These things were like, um, geez, thirty-five bucks, I guess, for the pair of them. And you got to get two pairs of them if you want to have one on the cooldown cart and one on the sled to disconnect it. Ah, that's like the biggest part of this build. And I, man, I hate spending it, but you got to do it. Now, for the heat transfer part of things, couldn't find anything you know cheap or used, but I got about the cheapest. Uh, heater core you could get for anything. This is off my, uh, yeah, it's for my 1988 F-150 um, heater core. Got two um, 5 eighths or half inch inlets outlets. This will set right at the bottom of the cooler nicely. Have a couple of quick attachment points there. And it was like uh, $17 and some change. So, yeah, it was just easier to buy it brand new. So we'll set her down right like that. Maybe put a little bit of a spacer to lift it up off the floor of the cooler so you can get the water, you know, current flowing in there as it's cooling. And you get the water flow up from underneath. And since this is going to be a lightweight build, putting a lead acid battery like a lawn and garden on there is going to totally defeat that purpose. Um, even those little ones that you put on your uh, car trailers, I mean, those are lead acid batteries too. It might have enough power to last for a while, but I think it's kind of iffy if you're going to be able to run all day on it. And again, they're still heavy. This is one of those um, lithium-ion uh, jump pack kits, which, from the research I did, had surprisingly good reviews. 
and I mean they actually seem to fire up cars and have enough power to you know put some charge back into a car battery so it's got to have enough oomph to run that little water pump for a while and plus I mean it weighs hardly anything we can just slap this onto the side of the cooler we'll be set even got a flashlight and a uh, USB charging port on it this one was like 40 bucks on Amazon now back in the day when I first kind of made this uh, <laughs> pretty crude cool down cart I just had a bunch of uh, tubing coiled around inside the cooler that was my heat exchanger and I had this hand pump so you actually had to you know sit there and hand pump this thing to get the sled cooled down definitely not the uh, it was not well received by the pit crew was in a bit of a hurry to get this thing put together so I just kind of threw that pump on there with some uh, drywall screws they actually tapped right into the cooler they might have poked through just a little bit but uh, we'll seal that up with some silicone got the hoses coming up through the uh, hole in the top there plugged them right into the pump got my quick disconnects all rigged up there turns out the uh, heater core was a little bit too wide for the cooler so it sets up off the floor there that'll work out just right now on the other side I got my battery pack zip tied to the side and uh, I just have some wires running over to the alligator clips there you know I didn't have a switch laying around and I wasn't gonna pay for one so you just clamp this on there when you want to run it off she goes so I was at an estate auction last week and uh, I saw this leaf blower come up ended up uh, bidding on it I got it for 35 bucks so I was pretty happy about that and uh, one of the guys there they were saying oh looks like you're gonna get some uh, good yard work done this season I kind of laughed because uh, yeah I strictly bought this not for yard work this is a uh, this is for grass drag racing to cool the sled down and uh, I don't know if it'll ever actually blow any leaves if it's gonna be a racing uh, leaf blower it's definitely gonna need some more stickers on it 